You are good, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit. There's a table that you prepared for me. In the presence of my enemies. It's your body.
Good morning. Whether you have children of your own or you have been a blessing in the life of a child, happy Mother's Day to you. So today we are looking at Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 12 and verse 30. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Well, good morning, each one. I trust that you're blessed this day. And I trust that you know the purpose and the will of God for your life. God has a plan for every one of us. And what we want to know is to know what God's plan is and then be empowered by God to do it. You see all the chaos that goes on and the fighting that's going on in our world today. And you see that God goes way back to when he gives us an idea of what life's really all about. You go back into the book of Jeremiah in the first chapter and you read the fifth verse and it says this, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Whoa. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. So, God knew us even before we were born. That's why you have such a conflict going on over things like abortion in the world today. But if God knew you before you were born, then he had a plan for what he wanted you to do. Why you were born. And who you can be and what you should do with the will so that you submit your will so that the will of God is done in you. Now he anoints us. You see it in Isaiah 10. It talks about the anointing that breaks the yoke. Well, we want the yoke of the enemy broken so that in our lives we can see and know and do what God wants us to do. And I go back and I think about my life. First kind of job I had, there's a couple of them I had. I was helping my cousin and we were building cottages and I loved it. Then I got a job working at the CNE and it was quite a job. I was a garbage collector. Then I was a school teacher. But in that whole process, I was looking to find the will of God. Was it God's will that I collect garbage? Was it God's will that I teach school? Was it God's will that I construct and build cottages? 
And I realized when I was praying, there was a will of God and I had to find it. And the will of God for me was that I go in the ministry. What a privilege. But it's a wonderful thing when we can ask God to show us his will and then he shows it to us and then he teaches us how to step out in faith and do it. And that happened for me. I resigned from being a teacher, went back to college, graduated from college, become a minister, a preacher of the word of God. What does God have for you to do? You may take several steps before you actually get to what God's will is. <clears throat> and in life, he is a will for us for many things. I remember when I met my wife, Brenda. Well, we didn't know each other. And I knew from God that she was the lady that I was to marry. She was very fortunate to get a wonderful, handsome guy like me. But I had to walk away from other things that would distract me in life from the ministry. I had to walk away in so many areas of life from what were not the will of God for me to what was the will of God for me. And I knew what God's will was. And I knew that it meant I had to go back to school and then I went back again to school and then I went back again and took courses to work on a doctorate and all these things in terms of getting prepared for what God had called me to do. I wanted to love the Lord my God with all my heart and I wanted to know his will and do it. He had a plan for me. Oh, you read back there, I read it to you earlier. He had the plan before I was even in the womb of my mother. Whoa. Now you can see why there's such controversy over abortions. And I have to, through life, deal with the temptations that the enemy would bring or the temptations that would come into my life that would try and keep me from doing the will of God. When you know the will of God, you can be sure that the enemy will try and come in like a flood to distract you. But what you want is the Spirit of the Lord to be raised up and raise up a standard in you so that you can walk in faith. It talks about that in Isaiah 59. The Spirit of the Lord. Well, God made your body, soul, spirit. You don't want to just focus on the body. You want his spirit to come and be part of you. You want the Holy Spirit of God to dwell in you. You want to be anointed by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and do the will of God in your life. So turn to God. Now you do that by becoming more like Jesus. I have that little handout I've got there at the church with the things, the 10 things that speak of the, what Jesus was like and what we should want to be like if we want to be more like Jesus. And you give your life to Jesus. You ask him to fill your spirit with his spirit and to empower you to do his will. And you invite God into your life and you leave the past and move on. Move on. Move on to be anointed, to have the Spirit of God flow through you. Oh, I've had the most wonderful week in prayer this week. I prayed and I kept getting these things from the Spirit of the Lord <coughs> that just would flow into me like a river. And I would just feel the empowerment, the spirit. I would feel knowledge of what the will of God is. So we can move forward 
in faith. And we can ask God for that. You can ask God for that. You can ask him today, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, show me your will for my life. God, give me the anointing and the empowerment of God so that I can do your will. Lord, I want you to be my shepherd. I want you to be my shepherd. Guide my steps. Take me to the place that you have for me so that I can do what you want me to do. And give me the spiritual strength to do it. You can't just do all the thing God wants you to do with your body. He may ask you to do some, with your, some things with your body, but he needs to fill you with his Holy Spirit and his Spirit flow through your spirit. And in the depths of you, in your soul, in your emotions that you deal with in life, we all deal with emotional things. In your emotions, you deal with your life. You want to have the sense and the presence and the Spirit of God. You want to love what God loves. You want to walk away from what God would have you walk away from. And you want to step in faith into what God's path is for you, a path of righteousness. A path that changes your life, a path that God uses you to see the lives of other people changed. Absolutely transformed by the power of God. Have I ever seen somebody's life change? Absolutely. Have I seen it recently? Would you say in the last couple of days? Is recently? Yes. I see God at work in people. And I see God using other people who are empowered by his Holy Spirit to have a part in what God wants to do for somebody else. May that be you where God tells you to go or to give or to do something that would show the will of God being released in the world in which we live. Ask him for his empowerment. Ask him for his spirit. Ask him for his forgiveness when you failed. And ask him to show you clearly what his will is for you to do. It'll vary for all of us. We won't all be called to do things, the same things. But he'll empower us to do what he wants us to do. And when you know what his calling is on your life and what his empowerment is, then by faith you step forward and do it. Do it for God. Do it to bless people. Do it to see people come closer to God. And part of what you'll be doing is praying. Praying for the will of God, for the power of God. Praying that when you know the will of God, you'll have the strength to do it. You see it back there in Jeremiah. If God gave him his will, all around him was chaos going on that was not the will of God. And challenges that he had to face and walk through, but he need to know the will of God and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to do it. We all need the same thing. So let's just ask God about it. Lord, show us your will. Give us the spiritual strength to do it day by day. And may we, O oh Lord, pray that prayer, not my will, but thine be done. And give us, Lord, a knowledge of your will and the power we need to do it in the world in which we live. Lord, we pray for the transformation of this world from evil to righteousness. We pray that people would come to you and submit their hearts and lives to you and see you change their lives. And Lord, where you want to use us to see that happen, we give ourselves to you so that you would receive the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. 
we pray and ask for your will in our hearts and your power to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. And God bless you, each one. And step out in faith and do the will of God. You will be blessed. God bless.